I really appreciate the opportunity of uh, presenting you uh, some of the successes that Moldova has achieved in the past two years, and of course some of the challenges that still remain. When it comes to Russia's malign influence, uh, as uh, it was mentioned already, as we speak, Moldova is de debating uh, the new national security strategy, which will hopefully be approved uh, this week. Well, it should be approved since we have an absolute majority in parliament. Uh, it is a belated document in the sense that if you ask a proper security expert in Moldova, and even anyone who follows the difficulties that Moldova has had in the past decades, they would tell you which entity is the main national security threat to Moldova. Yet, to this day, this has not been reflected in Moldova's national strategic documents. It is only this week that we will be voting in a national security strategy of Moldova spelling out that Russia is the main national security threat of Moldova, in, and not only spelling it out, but also making actions, taking actions in order to build resilience in our institutions with that particular threat in mind. Unfortunately, for far too long, Moldovan politicians have not only avoided this truth, but they've been actually actively engaging in promoting Russia's malign influence in Moldova, including, and not limited to, the propaganda, which some Moldovan politicians benefited directly from the broadcasting rights of Russian TV stations in Moldova. And, uh, of course, the political parties that the Russians have been sponsoring to do their bidding. Now that we've established clearly, albeit a bit late, that Russia is the main national security threat, we will have to invest more resources. Again, something that we should have been doing all these uh, 40 years, 30 years. but. Ironically, it was also the, the, the Russians that have been inoculating this idea into the Moldovan public that security is a, uh, neutrality is a guarantee of security, which is, of course, cannot be further from the truth. No neutrality clause of any country has precluded an aggressor from taking advantage of the vulnerability of that country. But the fact that the Russians have promoted this idea that neutrality is a guarantee of security, now it's very difficult to have this discussion about alternatives to Moldova's security. But we are opening this discussion, and we are again spelling out in Moldova's national security document for the first time that we need to explore other avenues of ensuring Moldova's security, not just limiting ourselves to neutrality, and increasing our cooperation with NATO. As, again, you don't have to have a PhD in, in, in security studies to realize that for a country like Moldova, in the region that Moldova finds itself in, uh, such an alliance as NATO is the only guarantee of, of, of proper security. But it will take time for us to, to debate this in the public domain and to democratically engage with our citizens so that we break through the spell of Russian propaganda through this wall that has been built for 30 years that neutrality is a guarantee of security. And to add insult to injury, it is the, the sheer fact that it was only Russia that was violating Moldova's neutrality for these 30 years, maintaining unwanted military presence in Moldova, and actually committing itself to withdrawing those military presence from uh, under the 1999 OEC summit in Istanbul, and failing to do so up to, to this day. So Moldova is, is clear in its, in its stance now, and will continue to support Ukraine, because we realize that the suffering and the sacrifice of Ukraine, it's not only for Ukraine's sake, it also to keep us safe as well. So we'll continue to provide our infrastructure and our, our support and our openness of our homes to, to our Ukrainian friends and neighbors. And we are very thankful to the international community for helping Ukraine, but also helping us in, in this uh, very difficult times. Uh, when it comes to, to Russia exploiting our vulnerability, they, they are now moving towards uh, exploiting the democratic process against our democratic future. They're trying to hijack our democratic elections in, in their favor. And that's why we had to take drastic measures to defend our democracy uh, by uh, uh, the Constitutional Court uh, declaring unconstitutional that party of shore, the oligarch that is a fugitive from Moldovan justice, and uh, will continue to defend Moldovan democracy. It doesn't give me any pleasure 
to be announcing that we had to, to uh, implement measures that preclude certain political parties from participating in the democratic process. But then when these political parties have been actively engaging in corrupting our citizens, and we've seen that time and time again, including in the Gagauzia election in the autonomous region just lately. And even though I was uh, sort of bragging at the beginning that we have 63% of seats in parliament and we have an absolute majority in parliament, there is no way how I can compete or any other political force in Moldova can compete against cash. I can tell Moldovan citizens that we are implementing robust reforms in uh, combating corruption, in building rule of law, in strengthening Moldova's security, in, in embracing and, and, and implementing and defending human rights in Moldova. But if somebody is offering that same citizen 100 euros or 100 dollars in cash, unfortunately nine times out of ten, and I, might, and I might be optimistic here, the people will take the money. And that's why we had to take measures, and thankfully our international partners and our citizens, frankly, understand that uh, difficult times require difficult measure, uh, measures to be taken. And we are thankful that the international community has supported us throughout this time to build our resilience in the energy sphere, in our defense sector. And I must commend our, our Minister of Defense who have been so instrumental in doubling the Moldova's defense budget without necessarily using public resources just because of the openness and the generosity of our international partners, he managed to double the budget. But this year, we're also increasing, increasing the defense budget because we need to, to, to play, to invest our fair share as well. And in this, again, national security strategy, we are committed to increasing Moldova's budget in the upcoming years to 1% of GDP. Not quite, not quite there with the 2% of the NATO standard, but then again, the majority of NATO members are not quite fulfilling that standard. For us, 1% is a big, is a big uh, uh, target because we've always had about 0.3%, 0.4%. So we are making serious steps in defending and, and, and uh, increasing the resilience of our institutions. And when it comes to the uh, Transnistria region of Moldova, when it now, that hopefully we will start negotiations with the EU, this should be the biggest breakthrough, the biggest uh, opportunity also for the resolution of the conflict, of the peaceful resolution of the conflict. Because the business elites in the Transnistrian region, much like the rest of Moldova, they see the benefits of being part of such a big market, such a peaceful rule of law driven market as the European Union. And I'm very hopeful that the start of the negotiations will create this impetus that will kickstart the process in a way that we unfortunately haven't seen for 30 years. Speaker Bob Shoy, could we return maybe to the media environment? I know there have been legislative projects uh, and steps taken to try to limit Russia's dominance, uh, traditional dominance in Moldovan media. And given the size of the media market there, um, it, it, the model was not sufficient to generate a lot of new content from Moldova. And so you were, Moldova was, was depending on Russia and, and elsewhere for, for, for free content, essentially. Um, what steps has the parliament taken? Where, where is that headed in, in Moldova? As I mentioned, we've been in this very, very odd situation when some of Moldova's politicians who pretended to be pro-European were rebroadcasting Russian propaganda in Moldova, which was cannibalizing the advertisement market. Because you can imagine Russian federal TV channel with, what, 100 million or more euros for entertainment budget being put on the same legal footing to compete on the national Moldovan market with the Moldovan TV channel, which barely has a total budget of a million euros a year, if at all. That was an unlevel playing field. And, uh, with the start of the Russian aggression in Ukraine, and frankly, even before that, we, we were concerned, uh, but we were in opposition. But when the Russian aggression started, it took us a year, and I'm not uh, uh, at all happy that it, that it took us so long. But we had to weigh all the pros and cons. We were concerned about what our citizens are going to react, what our international partners are going to say, because after all, we are the biggest promoters of freedom of, of uh, media and freedom of speech in Moldova. And we didn't take this decision lightly. But then when December came, and it was a year into the Russian aggression in Ukraine, the European Union shut down Russian propaganda in the EU, Russia Today. And we figured if it's good for EU to take these measures, then it's about time that we take care of it as well. 
So we shut down Russian federal TV channels in Moldova. Again, very belated decision, but we addressed that. But it will take years for us to actually remedy the damage that has been done in these 30 years. Uh, and also we need to invest more in quality content in Russian language in Moldova, mm -hmm. so that citizens who are Russian speakers have uh, something to, to, uh, to, to watch, be it entertainment or, or news, in the language that they understand, proper quality content. And uh, we also have now a newly created institution, a strategic communication unit that we modeled after the, our friends from the Baltics, that will oversee the national media environment and on social media to, to find and, and analyze and pinpoint where the, the, uh, the narratives come from and where the attacks are coming to us and that the other proper institutions, the national regulator and the audiovisual and the intelligence service, so they can take action in due time. And we've been proactive in defending our uh, informational security. A bit late, but as they say, better late than never. And we're taking our information security a lot more serious. And uh, again, we'll continue to invest in, in our security and information security. And uh, we need to provide those alternatives to our citizens. And also in this national security strategy, that's also an important element in building resilience in our institutions. Because we understand that when you live in a Russian propaganda bubble, when your citizens are left one-on-one -on -one with, with, with Russian propaganda, uh, that is inviting and creating the, the, and increasing the fertility of that ground for the Russians to exploit. So we've addressed that, thankfully, uh, but it will take time, as I mentioned, to, to remedy the damage that is done. And I have to thank uh, American taxpayers and, and USAID for supporting independent media in Moldova, because without the support of the United States and European Union, uh, it would not have been possible for, for those uh, few independent media in Moldova to be able now to compete and to win uh, against uh, the Russian elements that they are trying to, to promote in Moldova.